Hey everyone, welcome to the PHP 101 screencast with me, Phil, from BH of Web Design. It's been so long since I last done one of these, oh my god. Um, I haven't been avoiding people. <laughs> um, I've had some technical issues and personal issues and stuff that I've had to sort out, uh, resulting in me not doing one in such a long time. I just realised how white and bleached out my face is, so if I just kind of do that, it gives me a bit more of a natural colour, I suppose, hopefully. Yeah, uh, I've been having technical issues and stuff, I've just been fighting technical issues just to start recording this episode, so I can only apologise, but yeah. Um, this isn't necessarily going to be a long one today, which is surprising, because normally mine are just a bit long, but anyway. Um, so today is going to be about the SPL class loader. Now uh, I have mentioned about SPL class loader before. I just take my glasses off as usual in one of my previous uh, podcasts um, about how it's a useful tool. Okay. Um, now the whole idea about the SPL class loader is for those of you who are deciding to actually follow um, the fig. Uh, standards. Fig standards, what are those you ask? Well, um, in fact, if I just jump straight to uh, this screen and I'll just go GitHub, or actually, no, let's just Google it, it's probably easier. And typical. My machine size to run slow. Apparently, it's Audrey Hepburn's birthday. See what I mean by being having technical issues? I mean, this is just ridiculous. Uh, fig. Fig coding standards. Uh, right, PHP fig coding standards. Here we go. Fig is the framework interrupt gr interrupt group. Um, they decided to, it's about time that some kind of guideline rules are set out for um, PHP developers. Um, the first I heard about it is when I started my new job, which I've almost been there for a year now, almost. Um, and the whole idea is that you use auto loaders, and as code follows a certain set of rules. So instead of using use statement, uh, oh god, instead of using uh, requires and includes, you use use statements and namespacing, um, which. Uh, Trying to think, namespacing came in 5.3 of PHP. I think it was, I can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, part of it is that you should use a class loader. So, if you want to read up uh, on um, the PHP fig standards, then go to php fig.org uh, and then look up these uh, PSR standards. Um, I keep yawning for some reason, don't know why. But yeah, just have a look at them and they're an interesting read. They give you an example code. The standards are available on GitHub as well for you to um, read in more detail. Plus, you can see what's been proposed for PSR 5. But yeah, so anyway, part of it is you're meant to use a class loader. Well, one good class loader is the SPL class loader, which if you just search Google. If you search GitHub for the SPL class loader, as it is written out underneath here in the my lower 30 thing here, um, I've just picked up this this one here, Pavlenko, and now oh, it's going to run slow yet again, just to be annoying as hell. Here we go.
uh, it's really simple to use and yeah um, hang on a minute that's probably identical to the original one that I got I'm just double checking if this is the original one that I've got Yes. Right. Okay. This was the original. So, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to view raw of this. You can just download the file. Uh, this is even a gist, so, oh well. And I'm just going to copy that. And I'm going to open up my NetBeans. And in my screencast folder, I'm going to add. Oh, sugar. Wrong folder. New PHP file. And call it SPL class loader. I'm just going to get rid of that. Oh, that one's come back up. There we go. Ah, uh, doing this live to tape. It's always fun. And that's opened up in a completely different window for some reason. Copy that, paste that in there, and just check it's all there. And it is. Right. So, here we go. The class loader is now here. The SPL class loader. You could have just downloaded it. I've just done a copy and paste and created the file. Now, what did you do to use it? So, let's say you're building on a project on OOP chain of thought. So, there would be a new folder, which is also your namespace. And this is called project. And in there, you've got another file, uh, a folder called, uh, I don't know, um, tools. And inside tools, you've got a class. That is called um, spanner. And that's obviously in the that is now in the namespacing of projects tools if you don't know much about namespacing look it up it's all part of the new style of php all that jazz so this would be then project and backslash tools finish so now we have this class let's get rid of some of this junk that NetBeans has decided to throw in just for the fun of it. Um, in here, I'm just going to add a quick public function. Um, I'm going to call it nut. And all that's going to do is just return the string of bolt. In fact it's going to return that with a print. Just to make sure it is set up. Right. Now to the index file. In here I'm going to need to put a require in. Just to admit that. So I'll just do require uh, once. And this you're going to put require the SPL class loader the PHP file. Okay, so now we've brought in the class loader. Brilliant. But we need to set it up so it works. Give it some bits of information until it start running. So what we're going to do is go uh, dollar class loader. 
a equals uh, new SPL class loader. Right. We need to give it a namespace. The pe the namespace of the um, the project. That's the term I was looking for. Well, in this case, the overall arching namespace is project. So what we can do is just inside a comma, I think comma just put project with a capital P like it is before, and then we need to tell it uh, where this it is in relation to. Well, because I always put it in the root, I'm just going to do duh like that, so it knows where to find that namespace in relation to itself, and then we just do dollar class loader and then do uh, register. Right, that's all you need to do. You just have that in the header and then your class loader system will work. Just to prove it, if we wanted to get hold of this spanner class before, we would have had to done a uh, include um, project uh, tools, not tolls. I'll just turn on unlock of a file. No, I haven't. Oh, okay. Project tools as spanner dot php. Uh, and then we would have to do new spanner, blah, blah, blah. That's nasty. Okay. Don't be doing that crap. It's not a very nice way of trying to do this. Instead, what we do is just literally go use uh, project uh, tools. Not, I keep mistyping and spanner like so. That's it. Class loader will get hold of that class now. We just need to instantiate that class by just going spanner new spanner. All right, that is now that clanner, sp clanner? spanner class is instantiated. So we've got access to the stuff that's needed in it. And let's just prove that again by just literally just going at spanner. And then uh, I think it was nut, I think I called the function. Let's double check that. Yeah, it was called nut. What are you moaning about? Oh, because I put a full on colon, not semicolon in then. So, we've now used the class loader to get hold of the spanner class, and then we're calling nut, which when I refresh the page, or, well, let's say refresh the page, go to the page, and refresh. Wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait because things are just running slow. Oh, okay, then is this um, one second? I've got a slight issue there. Hmm, now why are you doing that? Double check, I've not got anything random in here that shouldn't be here. Something weird is happening that does not make any sense. I'm going to try another full on.
So actually, I've got another copy of the class loader, which is there. I'm just going to make sure everything is all right because I know this version definitely works. I've just randomly copied a version. Uh, let's see if that's going to work. Because I can't understand why it's trying to pick up what it is trying to pick up. Hmm. Project tools. My fault. Um, slip of the hand because of work, basically. Let's try it again. So refresh, and there we go. We've got a bolt. That's a slip of hand because of work. Oh dear. But yeah, now you can see potentially what it is actually doing. We're not having to type in um, the includes or anything. We literally just write a use statement give it the class, then instantiate the class, and then call the class, whatever function you want in the class. That is a brief, very brief introduction to SPL class loader. Uh, it is important, though, that if I'm correctly, the directory structure is to match the namespacing. If I remember correctly, let me just double check. Directory separator, directory separator. Uh, la, la, la. So what easiest way to find out? Project tools spanner spanner. This is totally unattested. Uh, whether this will work, I don't know. Yeah, right. As you see, it, it is meant to match the directory structure is meant to match the namespacing, which, to be fair, is in PSS, PSR standards that that is what is the case and that is what's meant to happen. So I'll just delete that and again and go like that and delete that and no and refresh and there we go so SPR class loader tiny little feet thing blooming useful when you use it though um, and yeah get on it it's part of PSR we are heading towards that way of PSR now, so might as well get on board now, is my advice. So yeah, uh, so that's it for today. Um, do remember to check out my site, bitchsowebdesign.com. Um, link and show notes will be put on this page, um, well, put on this site, on this video page. Um, with a link to a working SPR class loader, I may even just offer it as a download for you, to be honest. Um, so you know you have the right version. Um, also, uh, give us a follow on Twitter if you wish. Um, it's twitter.com forward slash blackhawkso or at blackhawkso. Uh, I apparently posted quite a lot of photos and videos, which I find quite surprisingly. I do talk random crap sometimes, um, do talk some interesting crap on there as well, and retweet some crap, um, and that's a wicked photo that I took, but yeah. So, that is the end of the episode, there we go, um, I've just realised I took that off one ear for some reason, it makes no sense, and I'll put them back on, so I could see when I was typing, but it's ridiculous for when I'm talking to you on the camera. Uh, right, that's it for this episode. Hopefully, <laughs> there won't be so much of a drought before the next one. Um, I'll have to figure that one out. Um, 
I did start work on a new uh, podcast, um, which has kind of been stuck at the moment. Um, it was meant to be a weekly one. Um, I just haven't had time. Plus, uh, it's also one of those ones that I could do with someone to be on with me. It's uh, basically about the weekly tech news. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel, um, you'll find out some more information there. Okay, um, drop us in line at phil at bitsowebdesign.com. I'm getting doubt now. Yes, phil at bitsowebdesign.com. Um, or tweet me uh, at buckleso, or you can Skype me uh, bhso dot phil is my Skype handle. Um, if you want to get involved in the podcast, or if you want me to be involved in another podcast, you've got an idea for for and you want help, let me know. Um, I'm hoping that a lot of my issues are now solved. And uh, hoping to be able to do a lot more stuff and technical issues, hopefully, are less common. I'm going to go because I need to shave this mullet of freaking hair. It's got a bit long. Uh, and until next time, see ya. Bye.